Hello friends, welcome back to our YouTube channel Doctor's Corner. Today we are going to discuss this term sham rage. So we'll discuss this term under this following headings. First we'll try to know what is the definition or the exact meaning of this term sham rage. Then we'll try to know some historical background about this condition sham rage, how it was introduced and finally we'll try to know what are the cause or the mechanism of this condition sham rage. Okay? So, if we think of a theory examination, so it is important in the subject physiology. Okay, physiology it can be asked under the central nervous system or neurology for three marks question in for MBBS examination also in the medicine or psychiatry or neurology this question can be asked. Okay. Now, what exactly is this term sham rage that is what is so it is actually a behavior rage means an uncontrolled anger okay. and sham may, uh, means falsely projected. So, there is an uncontrolled anger it is seen usually in the experimental animal okay, in neurophysiological uh, experiments especially done in cats, rats and dogs. So, you can see in this experimental animal you can see in this picture a cat which is having a behavior of a rage okay, that is not actually there will be no emotional uh, component that is called a sham rage. That is even with the slightest stimulus the animal will uh, behave in a abnormal, ba abnormal ma manner like in a uh, like a rage phenomena. So, what are the signs and symptoms during that clinical condition of sham rage? So, there is a development of a defense posture. So, animal will try to or maintain a defense posture and there are extension of the limbs, extension of limbs, lifting of the tails, lifting of tail and the animal will try to make some hissing sound or even sometimes even the growling sound hiss or growl or even spit. Okay. So, this type of behavior is seen along with the pilo erection, okay. pilo erection that is the, uh, the hairs which are present on the skin will become more prominent it is pilo erection then there is a wide opening wide opening of the eyes and uh, the uh, there will be severe uh, uh, dilatation of the pupil okay there will be dilatation of pupil and uh, even on mild provocation they will severe savage attack is seen okay and there is alternating violent motion of the limbs okay so this all these symptoms together it is seen in experimental animals and that clinical condition it is called a sham rage. Okay? Now, let us go to the history before knowing the exact cause why the animal will behave like this. So, his, some historical background. So, in the year 1925, okay, two important scientists who have described this term sham rage. So, I will just pen down the name of that scientist Walter Bradford Cannon and Sydney William Britton. Okay. So, in the year 1925 these two scientists described this term uh, sham rage while their experiments on cats. So, what exactly they have done is they had removed the neocortices from the cat that is the cortex from the brain. Okay. So, they have removed them. So, neocortices were removed from these uh, experimental animals of the cats and the cats will uh, after removal of that uh, neocortices cats have the typical behavior of sham rage. Okay? So, their cats have become violent with the small stimulus or the minimal stimulus they become violent and showed this type of the behavior after the removal of the uh, this one uh, neocortices and also one more scientist by name Brad. Okay, even he too did the experiments in cats and other animals in the year 1934 even after he got the similar results. Okay. So, when he showed the removal of the neocortex in the cats and dogs they produced the sham rage. Okay. So, earlier it was thought that it was this type of the rage or the behavior is due to the removal of this neocortices, but lateral they have found that subcortical structures like hypothalamus and some structures in the spinal cord or the mid uh, brain stem that control this behavior. Okay. So, let us discuss the cause why exactly 
exactly this will happen or the mechanism ok. So, hypothalamus is one of the major structure involved in this mechanism. So, those who do not know about the hypothalamus please go back to our playlist of doctors corner you can see in the subject anatomy and physiology we have discussed in detail about the hypothalamus. So, in the hypothalamus you can see this bright green color structure hypothalamus. So, in the hypothalamus basically there are two important centers ok. One center it is known as reward center ok. Basically, they will control the emotional behavior of an individual ok. Even in the human beings now we are discussing in an experimental animals though this types of behavior it is also seen in uh, human beings we will discuss later ok. There are two centers one is reward center another one is punishment center ok. So, two centers are seen in the hypothalamus. Okay. So, where exactly in the hypothalamus? Let me write down here in the hypothalamus. So, along the course of medial forebrain bundle, along the course of medial forebrain bundle, especially in the lateral and venteromedial nucleus of the hypothalamus. Ventero middle where exactly is this lateral and ventromedial nucleus of the hypothalamus you can go back to our video of physiology or functions of hypothalamus or the anatomy of, of hypothalamus where you can find this lateral and medial hypothalamus location ok. Anyway, so this is a part of a hypothalamus. So, if this part of the hypothalamus are stimulated an experimental animal then they will find a sense of pleasure or reward that is why it is termed as reward center. Similarly, uh, in the medial hypothalamus especially in the periventricular zone, periventricular zone that is the medial hypothalamus. So, in this part if this is stimulated electrically in an experimental animal then the animal will feel as if the punishment is given to them that is an unpleasant uh, uh, sensation is felt by them ok. That is why it is termed as punishment center. However, is these centers are not only present in the hypothalamus, but other structures in the brain like limbic system especially. So, for reward center other less potent centers are present in the brain like septum or amygdala ok, limbic system amyg dulla and certain areas of the thalamus and uh, also basal ganglia certain areas of the basal ganglia ok. The, even they are involved ok uh, in the regulation of the uh, reward and even for punishment along with the periventricular zone less potent area of the amygdala. So, usually the limbic system which will control the emotional status and they have a strong connection with the, the hypothalamus. So, indirectly it will control this thing. So, other structures are also involved in this punishment center. So, let us discuss how this experimental animal is usually done to determine this reward and punishment center. Now, you can see this clinical condition sorry this ex experimental setup. So, where you can see a monkey in the uh, you can see there is a liver ok. There is a liver in the hand of a monkey and that liver whenever he stimulates or put it on. So, it will stimulate a particular area in the brain. So, the electrodes are placed in the hypothalamus in the hypothalamus. Again there are region of the hypothalamus. So, suppose if the electrodes are placed in the reward center, reward center means lateral and ventromedial nucleus of the hypothalamus. So, whenever the experimental animal presses this lever the electrical signal goes and it will stimulate this reward center that is the lateral and ventromedial nucleus of the hypothalamus and the uh, person or this uh, experimental animal they will feel a sense of uh, wellness or a pleasure ok. Similarly, similarly when the electrode when the electrode is placed in the hypothalamus only in the punishment center ok in the punishment center. So, punishment center is in the periventricular region ok in the periventricular region punishment center. So, whenever if there is a stimulation of the pen of uh, the whenever the experimental animal presses the liver the electrical signal goes and stimulate this punishment center of the hypothalamus ok. So, that will cause us very unpleasant feeling that will leads to the rage or anger situation ok an unpleasant uh, state that is an anger situation. So, 
this condition so uh, animal will try to not to touch this liver again because whenever he touches he will feel that uh, uh, punishment center and there is a, a phenomenon of rage or uncontrolled anger is seen in this uh, experimental animal. So, this was how the uh, reward center and punishment center was uh, discovered in the experimental animal. Similar thing we see even in the humans. Okay. So, in the humans uh, this type of stimulation is usually uh, done in some few cases by uninhibited hypothalamic discharge. Okay. So, this uh, is generally done uh, in case of hypoglycemia by insulin or carbon monoxide poisoning. So, similar condition in humans we can uh, do experimentally in carbon monoxide poisoning. So, carbon monoxide poisoning or by hypoglycemia by insulin, okay. hypoglycemia in by insulin after administration of the insulin. Okay. Anyway, so in experimental animals so, uh, done by the various scientists. So, this reward and punishment center especially in the hypothalamus was found out and this type of behavior is seen. So, earlier what it was thought was uh, it is that is uh, and um, uh, whenever there is a removal of the neocortex as done by the scientist, okay, Cannon, Britton and the Brad, they removed the neocortices of the experimental animal and after the removal the animal showed the symptoms of sham rage that is due to the smallest of the stimulus, there is no reason for rage, the experimental animal will develop uh, this type of the rage like behavior that is defense posture, extension of limbs and uh, making some sounds and violent behavior okay? and even they will try to catch their prey. Okay? such defensive and the predatory behavior was seen. So, this type of the behavior after the removal of the neocortex, so this term it is called as decortication. After the decortication uh, of the experimental animal, then this type of behavior is seen and it is termed as sham rage. Sham means it is falsely projected because there is no emotional component, there is no reason to be violent. Okay? Without uh, unnecessarily the animal will become violent and they will have a predatory action and all this anger feelings. Okay? So, this uh, that was sham rage and earlier it was thought it was the centers are in the cortex. But later it was found that subcortical structures are involved, especially this reward and the punishment centers in the hypothalamus. Okay? So, what happens is during the decortication, so normally there is an in animals and human beings there is a balance between rage and the opposite state is the calm emotion. So, this occurs due to reciprocal connections between hypothalamus and cerebral cortex. So, cerebral cortex and hypothalamus they have a reciprocal connections. Okay? they have a reciprocal connections. So, because of this reciprocal connection normally humans and the experimental animals they will be in the balance. Okay? But when this connection between the cerebral cortex and the hypothalamus is severed okay, by decortication, decortication that is removal of the influence of the cortex to the subcortical structures that is decortication. So, the ex animal, exper uh, animal experimental animal will exhibit the outrage of uh, outburst of rage on mild peripheral stimulation. So, this term it is known as sham rage. Why? Because there is a continuous uh, uh, stimulation of the punishment center okay, which was kept inhibited by the cerebral cortex. Cerebral cortex used uh, will inhibit the hypothalamic punishment center. Okay punishment center. So, when there is a decortication or removal of this, then this inhibition was lost and due to the inhibition was lost, the punishment center was stimulated and a sham rage feeling was there. Why it is called sham rage? Because it is not, so this is, uh, there is, uh, since the emotions associated with that is absent okay? and it is due to the release of hypothalamus from the cortical control and even this type of sham rage can be abolished by lesioning of the caudal hypothalamus. So, it can be abolished if we experimentally give lesion or the lesioning of the caudal hypothalamus. If you destroy the hypothalamus punishment center, so then this type of behavior 
is sham rich can be abolished okay so hope you understood the today's topic so let me summarize what is sham rich so it is a typical violent behavior seen in experimental animals after decortication it is after the removal of the neocortex from the experimental animal so uh, because the main cause is due to underlying the mechanism of the reward and punishment centers in the hypothalamus so punishment center especially which is present in the medial hypothalamus that is the periventricular zone okay so they get stimulated it usually it is kept inhibited by the uh, cerebral cortex so whenever there is a decortication done so this inhibition is lost and there is excess stimulation of the peripheral center and this peripheral center excess stimulation causes the animal to develop this defense posture extension of limbs and uh, lifting the tail hissing and growling sound and spitting pyloriction and the wide opening of the eyes along with dilatation of the pupil and the violent movements of the limbs and predatory behavior so this typical behavior after the decortication in an experimental animal due to the stimulation of the uh, this one punishment center in the hypothalamus leads to sham rage okay hope the concept is clear if you like our video please subscribe our channel doctor's corner and share it with the